It's a lovely 10 degrees Celsius outside. Absolutely lovely weather. Perfect conditions for lying around on the ground, crawling underneath a car. Because I figured. I figured we'd replace the speedometer cable in this thing. Because when I was driving the other day, uh, the speedo just stopped working. And uh, the cable's broken. I've taken out the dash and uh, the cable's just not spinning. So I've taken the time to do my research. There are no pirate parts available. So I've had to go to Nissan and thankfully they had one for 150 euros. Well here it is, basically. 150 euros worth of speedometer cable. So it is a rather long thing, so I suppose it's somewhat justified. But we still need to get the old bloody thing out before we can get around to putting this one in. And that's not going to be too much fun. Because, ugh, this is not the kind of ground you want to be on, but it's what I've got. And the cable's running from back there, on the other side of the exhaust pipe, all the way, I haven't even looked at it, around all this bloody framework, and going up somewhere in the front of the vehicle to the dash. And it's just going to be a royal pain to get out. And I'm going to be covered in muck and dirt and water and shit while I'm done with it. I was not just to, took a drill to the end of the original wire just to confirm that uh, this is actually the old cable and I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to happen. So yeah, this thing has obviously suffered uh, liquid ingress and it's all rusted and horrible and broken. And it's obviously <laughs> snapped somewhere along the way because it isn't spinning at the other end. And yeah, the wire is not supposed to be five centimeters longer than the actual housing. So that thing's absolutely toast. Uh, here's some lovely mid-engine Nissan engineering goodness for you. So we've got this uh, main drop in the middle of the frame, which is stuck between two solid metal pipes, making it impossible to access with a socket because this pipe is too close, and it's impossible to access with a screwdriver because we've got this giant coolant pipe there, preventing any kind of reasonable angle of act attack. Well, I finally got that out using a rather unique combination of all the tools. But now we're moving on to the next person. And, ugh. So, the one we just did was just there. I can see the screw hole. Can't even access that with my eyes. So now I've actually got some freedom to move the cable around. And watch this. The next fastener is up there, about halfway to the coolant reservoir. Where you can see me uh, moving my cable a bit. And if we zoom out of that, That's all the ship that's in the way. So, uh, in order to get that, I have to remove this bottom cover, uh, this air intake hose, and uh, whatever else coolant lines are around there. And to that, I say, fuck that. <laughs> I'm just uh, not going to bother. Uh, I'm going to run the new cable in parallel with the old one, cut the old one and just leave that mount unused because there's no way in hell I'm disassembling that, this vehicle to that extent in 10 degrees heat and on the wet ground 
uh, in the very old spring. That's just not happening, so we're going to be cutting this line. Thankfully, getting it to, out of the inside of a vehicle doesn't seem to be a big deal because if I do that, we can hear it just flowing through the rubber grommet. So I'm waging that uh, if we just grab this and do that. Ah, perfect. Now, the big question is. Is this a complete set? Because this doesn't look the same as the other cable. It really doesn't. Uh, this one's got a big dick in the middle, whereas the new one doesn't. So there's probably going to be some parts reusage going on. Because that's not extending out. No erection. So I'm probably going to have to be somewhat careful about how I'm handling this thing. But uh, I think I'll just grab a saw and cut this right here and pull it out. Because I think that's just... Like, that's the coolant reservoir we were seeing, so I don't think there's more than one mount left. So I think this should just pull out if I cut the end of it. Alright, I undid a final clip there, so... If my theory is correct, this should just, like, move relatively freely. Yep, there we go. So that's just one last mount. And we're free to check this thing out. Well, if this wasn't fucked before, it's fucked now. Oh, there we go. So what do we have? We have, like... piece of metal stuck into the end of a wire. I was expecting something more fancy because that looks like something which had really already be installed in a new one. Is that even? No, that's just... That is just a wire pressed into a square. So that's not something we're going to be moving onto, that, onto a new one. Well, that's weird. How the hell's that supposed to work then? Because this guy does not have the right bits for mating onto that. Nope. They're the wrong genders. Hmm. Well, that's an issue. Ah, there we go. I'm oh, just being an idiot. If you actually put the wire on something reasonably flat, the dick extends out. So, that's going to work after all. Whew, what a relief. I was afraid for a second there. So let's just rip the old one out using brute force and get the new guy in. So this should just be ready to pretty much pull out. I need to get rid of that guy because that's going to put a stop to everything. Okay. Now we just pull. There we go. Out you come. Oh. Ah. Beautiful. Like clockwork. Very broken, rusty clockwork, but still clockwork. And now I think we'll get a beautiful demonstration. Rather first person. And how this thing is entirely broke. Yeah. Well, that's not supposed to happen. So now comes the question, do I want to write the big chunky part with a rubber plunger on it through all the messy little labyrinth of a vehicle? Or do I want to pull the part with a giant metal bend on it? Oh. Grabby pokey. Oh. Ta-da! Sweet! That's, that's done. Now, before we start to connect all this up, you know, I'm going to give some love to this pedometer because this was it's so full of old rotting grease. I'm suspecting the friction in this is not what it's supposed to be. 
and I wouldn't want to overload the new cable for me when I plug it in, so that's getting on the bench. Oh yeah, wow, that is horrible. I have to put in proper effort to turn that. If I just grab it down that, I can barely get it to move. Like, for just two fingers it takes oh, considerable effort. That's fucked. That needs some fresh grease stat. Hey, look at that. That speedometer's got a bug. Oh man, just look at all this awful, awful dried up grease. This could very well be the sole reason that everything failed to begin with. This is just horrible. It looks more like, well, excrement than it does grease. Jesus. Well, this wasn't anywhere near this bad the last time I had it apart, which wasn't very long ago at all. Oh, it's just getting worse and worse. So this is some kind of read switch to uh, tell something that the vehicle is moving, but oh, look at that. That's just wrong, and in that, oh, that's horrible. I mean, jeez, this is just painful. Oh, hey, you. This poor little thing, I can't believe I've subjected it to such horror. And here's what's now left of my speedometer. Uh, so the main issue is that the bushing down here is uh, suffering from uh, way more friction than it should uh, from the bad degrees inside and I'm thinking some of the really horrid stuff they put on the gearing here has just kind of seeped into that over time and has now made it run rather hard. Uh, I have been giving it a an absolutely brutal treatment of her various solvents and really penetrating fluids like the PTFE stuff there which will go into absolutely anything and it has kind of loosened it up a bit it's no longer absolutely horribly hard to turn but it's still not where I'd like it to be and indeed the, the plastic down there runs warm when you spin it with a drill so this is uh, it might have already turned into a lost course since uh, in taking this apart I had to disassemble the entire speed of thing and that just went pop and flew into a thousand little pieces and uh, this uh, upper uh, actual uh, speedometer part is kept in with this rather horrible uh, factory uh, push thingies where they've just uh, they've uh, have this stamped out and then they've shove the driver bam to split that tip and squeeze the top part in place so this just sits on top of that like so so I'm not sure if I'm ever gonna get this back together properly I will have to give it a go I don't feel like trying to source a new speedometer for this thing no sorry and uh, I'm thinking that uh, the symptom of scene which has been a jumpy speedometer uh, would be caused by uh, some of that grease there just kind of hitting against uh, the spinning magnet of this lower rotor assembly because this is a spinning magnet which just uh, causes this thing to induce some current in it you know just like one of those hoverboard things gee who'd, who'd think that uh, Nissan invented that in 1999 but yeah, tons of little bits and pieces are flying everywhere. I've lost my little copper washer again. I know, there we go. This thing went on the floor. Quite a miracle I found it again. But yeah, I think, think about it, I'm just going to take this entire thing and put it in a bath of oil overnight to just try and get any kind of fresh lubricant to seep into there in hopes of making it a bit more malleable because this is not going to last long. It would like last a year and then I'd have to just replace the entire assembly which is not something I'd rather do uh, there we go we've got our little beaker of oil with the meter inert sitting on a little hot plate which is just a flipped over travel iron but that's gonna soak for a day or two and 
Hopefully, we'll get some of that oil to penetrate. Alright, so I didn't remember where I left off, but uh, uh, I have just constructed this rig to uh, turn the speedometer bearing in hot oil in order to loosen it up a bit. So what I've done is I've taken an old CD-ROM eject uh, motor there, from the tray motor, and a rubber band, and I've connected them together, and I'm holding it in place with just a couple of claps. So let's see if we can make this thing turn around in the hot oil just in order to agitate it a bit, and perhaps in an off chance make it suck some oil into its poor worn out bearing. <laughs> Would you look at that? Isn't it beautiful? Oh, that's, that's, that's fantastic. That's an invention I'm, I'm proud of. <laughs> right, gonna let that run for a couple more days. Uh, this is a roughly 30% uh, diesel to engine oil blend and uh, it's being kept at about 50 to 60 degrees Celsius like so and uh, I just uh, had a feel and we can uh, turn the motor off and if we poke that thing somewhere else this actually turns very easily now. I mean, if, uh, when I started the turning process, it would not turn if I just used the tweezers, and it'll it'll turn just by magnetically being attracted. So we certainly have made some progress. The diesel oil has. Uh, definitely penetrated into the bearing. So I think I'm going to be happy with that and uh, we're going to be taking this thing out and try to reassemble it. This copper washer is incredibly important, irreplaceable and obtaining which does not belong on the floor. you know what this looks like? This looks like something you literally pulled out of your ass. Alright, oh, slowly but sure this starts to come back together. I actually figured out how to uh, remount this uh, rather efficiently using the original Nissan. Uh, uh, beating the metal and forcing it to expand method and that is quite literally what I did. I, I had to bring out the vice and I just use a knife and a hammer to first bring the cracks back out, get back out open so that I could you know, force something bigger in than I just used. A uh, chisel to very thoroughly whack the metal once uh, very hard with a hammer and uh, that made it uh, crack open and go and expand enough to hold the front place plate in place. This is all starting to look rather good. Uh, everything's working. I have managed to bend the axle for the speedo needle, which is a bit of a shame. It's never going to be straight again. It's just going to snap if I try. Uh, but uh, beyond that, this has, seems to have made it reasonably cleanly. I did manage to scratch up the threading of the axle, so that's a bit coarse. I had to spend uh, quite a few minutes uh, cleaning that up with uh, sandpaper and uh, other scratchy metal tools, but uh, it turned out reasonably well. So at this stage, all I've got to do is just uh, put all the little ancillary things, the reed switch and stuff, in place, and they should, in theory, be good to go. I've just got to figure out how to trim in the actual needle placement. Oh, there we go. I think this should be ready to go. I just gave it a bit of a drill test. I, I just shoved the drill in the, it's behind. 
and uh, it uh, does its shoes. And it does do exactly what it's supposed to do. Let's see if we can do this one-handed. Adding miles. I think it might be a bit too insensitive, so I'm going to adjust the needle slightly upwards and then we'll give it a proper speed test for the GPS.